whether you are a seasoned journal creator, maker, or you are new to journaling, and perhaps this is your first ever attempt at it, one of the hardest things is just breaking that page, breaking it in and knowing where to start. So for this week, we're going to be using the following colors as our jumping starting point. I'm gonna be using this rice paper because it kind of embodies some of those. So the challenge this week is to use these colors on your page, pretty simple. Now, it doesn't have to be an exact match. As you can see, my rice paper is not perfect, but I see some of those blues and some of those tan colors um, that I'll be able to kind of channel in. Um, and again, you can use one, two, all of the colors on the color swatch as, um, you know, to complete your page for this challenge. I am going to be using my Finnabar from Prima Liquid Acrylic um, Paints. These are super luscious and uh, it's a set of 20. Uh, those are the colors that they've come out with so far. I have a black, I have a couple of blues, and then I've got some of those yellow, uh, golden type of maybe, uh, one is a little bit more orangey. Uh, so I'm going to use, again, what I have in my stash. You might use watercolors or sprays. The only color I don't have, it's funny. Well, here's the black. So I've got a black that's gonna work fine. Uh, I also got a blue. I actually have a couple of blues, but I thought this blue might look really nice. Uh, and then I've got a couple of those, you know, again, yellowish type of golden um, colors. So I figure we can play around with those and see. Of course, I could always um, mix the colors and, and get something more. But umber, I don't have. The only color, as you can see from my sticky, that I'm missing is umber to complete the collection. And it's one of the colors in the swatches. But again, that's okay. If you don't have anything that kind of resembles or you're missing one of the colors, just improvise or you can just skip it all together. Okay, now if you are new here and you are not familiar with the Saks Journal Page Challenge, then first of all, let me welcome you. Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Maddie and we are going to be working on week one of the Saks Journal Page Challenge. Now, again, if you are completely unfamiliar with what's happening, I am going to explain it a little bit more, but I'm also going to leave a link here for you to watch a video where I explained what the challenges are, what they're about, how it's going to work, how you can participate so you can learn a little bit more. But the first thing I'm going to do is going to be to gesso my page. One of the biggest mistakes that a lot of folks make is not to gesso their page it is going to make a big difference on your work when you pre gesso your page so I highly recommend it I am also going to remove my page from my journal simply because of the fact that it's easier for you guys to see it uh, on camera I don't have to you know have the whole binder uh, on the desk and I can always use the pages as I'll show you later uh, in different ways and of course I can rebind them as well so with my page being gessoed I am ready to go on to start adding some of my color now we were talking about the challenge and I wanted to make sure that you guys understood that it's very simple all we're going to do is I'm going to post a challenge for you to complete a journal page per week you can use a journal you can use a notebook you can use whatever you have handy. The challenges will vary, but the exercises are all the same. They're meant to challenge you to create a page or a layout. It can be as simple as um, you want it to be. It could be just doodling or maybe gluing some images or just putting down some paint because some weeks honestly are going to be a little tougher than others, you know, just personally speaking. Uh, if it's been a heavy week or a long week, um, you know, challenge yourself to still put something down on a page. Again, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. It could just be some doodling or just, let's say that this was that week and I gave you the color prompts. Just grab the colors and you know what? Just kind of splotch them or splatter them onto the page. And if that's all you can manage for that week, that's fine. Cause you can always come back to it later and continue to work on it. Right? So 
We are not going for perfection. We are not trying to create a masterpiece. <laughs> the exercise shouldn't take more than, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour. It should be something super quick. Uh, if you want to come back and add details or if you're inspired to continue to work on it past that point, by all means, go for it. But I don't want you to feel like, oh, I have to make time in order to do this. And I'm going to need, you know, X amount of hours. No, no, just do something. The hardest thing always is getting started. And the biggest mistake we all make is putting it off because we think it needs to be super elaborate when it really doesn't. So again, that is the one thing I'm going to keep repeating and keep repeating week after week. Just do it. You know, just put something down. The goal is to create something, anything. And of course, to relax and to have fun. Now, it doesn't matter what level you're on or what level you think you're on. Um, and some weeks, again, are going to be better. Some weeks are going to be worse. Some weeks you might find really challenging. But I don't want you to skip those weeks because those weeks are going to be tough for me, maybe. And I don't want to skip them. The only way to grow is to continue to challenge ourselves, right? That is how we're going to perfect and master the craft. The only way to do that is to em embrace and work through even those colors that we don't like or that challenge that we don't um, like to perhaps do. You know what, do it anyway. If it's not your favorite, so what? It's not your favorite, but you did learn something from it, right? Now, again, even if it's just splatters, even if it's just strokes uh, with some paint brushes, even if it's just gluing down some magazine images uh, and some collaging, that's okay. You've broken a white page and that's what we're after. Oh, I should also mention when it comes to journaling or mixed media, it's always, always going to look like a hot mess when you first start. Like, honestly, I think just about anyone out there can tell you that they come to a point where they're like, oh, I should probably just throw this away. This is so not what I had in mind. I don't like it. It happens to us all. But don't give up because you just keep adding to it and it'll just get better and better. Again, if you need to put it away for that week, put it away. Come back to it another week. Maybe three months down the road, you'll flip back to that page and go, oh, you know what? I have just the perfect image for that or the perfect napkin or the perfect idea, whatever it is and you'll be inspired then to do something with it. Also, remember, there's no such thing when it comes to journaling or mixed media as trash because you can always add color to it, right? You can even, you know, re it and, and start again or add another piece of paper on top of it and keep layering until you love it. So again, I encourage you to just step out there and embrace the challenges. Okay, and so far, of course, you've seen me make a hot mess uh, because, like we said, you see, not all of them are going to start out as your favorite. You're going to really question yourself uh, and, and think maybe, you know, this is not the greatest piece ever. Maybe I should abandon this, but don't. Okay, so I'm going to um, just let you kind of watch through this for a little bit. You can watch me make a hot mess. And then I will be back uh, and hopefully you are crafting along. Hopefully you've got your colors out and you are crafting with us. If you don't, feel free to pause the video right here and go gather your colors and supplies. Hopefully you have some inspiration now or at least that urge to want to create and then we will come back on our next step. Okay, and so you've watched me continue to add 
paint here and there, move it around, blot some of it off, creating uh, some white or lighter areas and leaving some darker ones. And again, that's part of the whole process is just continuing to add those colors. It's always going to look like a hot mess at first and eventually it will all start coming together. Now, also, the other thing I want to mention is I try never to waste anything. So there were some little bits um, on the table, which I proceeded to pick up and you see it created some really nice splatters. So I didn't even have to splatter. I just kind of picked up what had, um, you know, fallen onto the table and there's some more drops there. So I'm just kind of positioning them and you see, I now have some little blotches here and there. So never, ever, ever waste product, even what is left on my silicone uh, mat. And, and this mat's really cool because it holds both ink pads, uh, like the little ink pads and the bigger ones, but it also acts like a palette if you want it to. And then of course it just wipes completely clean because it is silicone. So it's just a great tool to have. But again, looks like a total hot mess. So we're gonna continue to keep working it. The next stage that we're gonna um, start working on is starting to think also, for example, I have rice paper that I started with and that was my whole inspiration uh, starting point. So keeping that in mind, I am leaving some areas a little lighter. I love that brown, by the way. Fell in love with how that brown looked. So I decided to start bringing in a little bit more brown to balance it out. Because as you can see, it is just on one side right now. So I am going to bring some of that, those darker browns. I actually have the two shades of brown and I'm gonna start mixing them and bringing them in on other areas just to balance out my page. But going back to the rice paper, the rice paper, um, is going to be obviously the main focal point on this page. This is just the backdrop. Uh, so we are going to lose some of this. And, and one of the things about uh, journaling or even mixed media is you've got to be willing to lose some of your background. In my case with this one, you know, <laughs> no worries trying to lose some of it because I'm not in love with it. But what if you have this amazing background, right? And you're like, oh, I just love this you have to be willing to sacrifice some of it because a lot um, of how we get that look is going to be to layer. And in order to layer, we need to cover up some of our work. So we are now going to bring back in the rice paper and I am looking for that area that I left a little lighter purposely in order to be able to, uh, you know, get my rice paper on there. I am going to use the water brush to help me break down the fibers uh, on the rice paper and then I'll be able to just simply tear. Uh, again, for those of you who uh, have followed us for a little bit or who watched our videos, you know that I love the tearing method because I love getting those little hairy fibers on the edges. A, it just makes for a very soft edge, um, which helps the rice paper to blend into your page or your project and b i just love those little wisps that you get uh when you use a tear method okay so the next thing we're going to need to do is going to be to glue down our rice paper and for that i am going to use our spectrum art creations decoupage and sealing glue which dries matte and can be heat set so I don't have to wait. And that's one of the reasons that I love it. Now, for small areas, it comes with its own um, brush. It has a um, brush attached to the lid, but if you're going to be doing bigger areas like this, I do recommend um, using a brush, uh, independent brush that is, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing here next. But like I was mentioning, see, we're going to lose some of those areas and that's okay. We have to be willing to sacrifice some of those areas that we love, like that brown area, love it. But it's okay because we were not sure where this was going to lay and what other uh, pieces we might be using. Again, it's all a work in progress. So we are going to glue this down. And then later on, I also decided to add some additional uh, pieces of the rice paper as well. Okay, with the 
piece all dry, we can go ahead and cut any excess of the rice paper that we have. And of course, if we have anything that we can use, we can salvage that for later projects or even for adding on to the borders. But in this case, I had nothing left. Okay, we are up to this point. So now I realize that we need to darken some of these areas uh, because on the bottom, corner where the flower is you can see there that there are some shadows there some dark browns and i thought okay we need to definitely start bringing in some of our darker um, elements in order to balance that out in addition to the fact that part of the challenge was using our black so i am going to be bringing in some black and i'm going to be blotting it off because i don't want it to get too too dark but it does make uh for a nice um kind of like a weathered edge uh, with a little bit of, I don't know, not grunge, but like shadows. And that already is starting to look so much better, isn't it? It's starting to come together again. Like I said, it's going to get better. Is it going to be a masterpiece? Is it going to be my favorite piece? Maybe not necessarily, but we put something down on the page. Again, what that something might be to you, it might be something completely different. Maybe you are just going to find some images in, you know, in a mag in magazines that have these colors and you're going to create some collaging and just glue them down. Uh, maybe you're going to do something a little bit more eclectic. Maybe you're going to grunge this up. Maybe uh, these colors will lend itself for, I don't know, uh, maybe, oh, you know what? Like an ocean, uh, theme would be good with this too because you've got your blues and you've got your uh, sand color almost right your neutrals actually funny enough um, you guys are going to have to also check out if you are participating in the art panel challenge because it's kind of funny I just realized how that worked out I'm not going to tell you anymore <laughs> you'll have to tune in and watch but and, and I'll leave a link um somewhere probably um, at the end for that as well or you can find those also in our challenge that is i'm sorry in our channel that is a different challenge that we also have um, that you might really enjoy participating in because that one uh, the art panels are very cool uh, they have a lot of great uses uh, and kind of like these two these are not only uh, can be used for obviously art journaling, for having an amazing journal, because if you think about it, if you do the next 15, 20, 30, 50 weeks, right, you are going to have an amazing journal with so many different pages uh, and, you know, just all kinds of, and you can take notes if you want, you know, what the challenge was and put a sticky on there or write it on the back of the page so you can be reminded of that as well. But yeah, I'll leave more information on the art panels uh, for you guys to go watch. But already by adding some of the uh, other pieces of rice paper, the page is starting to come together and to blend a little bit more. I'm also going to be using the titanium white because the titanium white is going to help me to blur some of those edges in some areas, plus to give me some highlights on the page as well. And so I'm using a very light wash i'm using a little bit of white with a whole lot of water and just starting to slowly blend now i'm not only going to blend with the white i'm also going to blend in with the dark you see that corner there at the bottom has got a lot of shadows and i really enjoy that so i am going to be uh, bringing some of that in as well and again uh, just keep playing with it keep playing with it you can always add you can remove if there's something that you do not like remember it's just paint it's just paper it is just magazine it is just doodles it is just uh i don't know whatever you're using gel pens whatever chalks 
oxide inks, sprays, uh, gelatos, whatever medium you're using. Again, so long as you have primed that surface, you are going to be able to um, continue to play with it and it's gonna continue to hold. Uh, and that's why I mentioned it's so important at the beginning to gesso your page. Not only will it help your products go that much further, but it is also going to help your page be able to withstand uh, multiple mediums and of course, uh, additional water, paints, scrubs. As you, if you notice, I'm, scrub, I'm using my fingers. So, so I like to play. I like to get in there and just do all kinds of mess. Great. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, oh well. You know, I'll, I will keep layering it until I'm happy or until I'm ready to say, you know what, I'm going to walk away from this page um, and I'll come back some other day. And I do. I will come back to them. So, you know, again, please, please, I want to keep encouraging you guys. It's so important. I know I keep repeating it, but it is so important to me that you guys feel the freedom of being able to create without feeling that you have to have a set outcome it is more about just breaking out all those things that you have that you've been meaning to use or get to and just playing with them. Uh, whatever that may be is totally up to what the muse has struck you for that week. And then of course also how you interpret the actual challenge, the prompts. Uh, that's totally up to you because some weeks uh, we're going to have some additional prompts or maybe something different that you've never worked with and uh, you will, you know, absolutely have to come out of the box as far as thinking. Uh, for example, like this week, I used a stencil, right? Although the stencil was not part of the challenge, I was going to make it part of the challenge, but I didn't. However, if it would have been, and maybe you're looking at this and thinking, okay, um, that's great, but I don't have any stencils. You might not own a single stencil. You might think you don't own a single stencil, but you just don't know that you do because there are so many things around the house that you can use for a stencil. Essentially, anything in your home with holes can become a stencil, whether it's a strainer or a clean fly swatter or maybe some 80s, fishnet stockings that you have laying around, all those can be used as stencils. But of course, you guys know, or at least I hope you know, know now that we have thousands of products in our online stores. And of course that we also have live sales every week here on YouTube. So if you are interested in purchasing any products for your art and craft needs, uh, we do hope that you guys check us out. Okay, so I decided to add one more little piece in that corner, and with that, our page is pretty much done. So with our page done, I'm gonna take it over to my printer and we are going to photocopy it. So this is the original that we just finished, and then this is a scanned copy. So now I can use this page over and over again to do all kinds of projects. The original I can keep, of course, in my binder or in my journal. Here is the color palette and our inspiration for today. And now I've taken another copy and I've cut it down. We can make jumbo uh, tags, we can make postcards, we can do belly bands, we can do, um, you name it, you name it, side pockets, anything you guys can think of. We now have our own paper to be able to do that. So really quickly, we're just going to round the corners off of one of these and we're going to make a postcard. On the second one, we can do bookmarks, we can cut out ATCs, we can do all kinds of fun stuff, or we can have a second postcard, right? On this big one, how about we just use our angle chomper and we cut out some corners at the top and then we, of course, use this amazing ruler, which I love because it's got eighths and sixteenths and it also has a zero, uh, so it helps me to center stuff. And then we're just going to insert an eyelid. I started with this small one and then I quickly realized mm, this this tag is a little too big. So I brought in one of our bigger wide angle eyelids from We Are Memory Keepers and I added one of those. And as quickly as that, I've got a gorgeous 
um, tag, jumbo tag that we can journal on the back. And of course, we're going to um, distress these. Now, of course, we can always embellish any of these um, that items that we cut out from our photocopy paper. We've got one postcard, so the second one, I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm gonna cut it and make some ATCs. I could do angle pockets, I can do two journaling cards, but I'm gonna cut them down to two and a half by three and a half to make some ATCs or artist trading cards. And of course, later on, we can come back and decorate those. So I just might make a video, stay put. I just might make the continuation of this video and decorate these ATCs and um, work on the postcards as well as that tag and maybe some other pieces to kind of, um, you know, why not use the beautiful stuff that we've created. We hope that you guys have enjoyed it. We hope that you are excited to start trying uh, journal pages with us and accept the challenge. We hope that you guys will also be sure to check out our online stores. If there's anything that you need, we have two online stores, spectrumartcreations.com and our Etsy store as well. Of course, we also hope that you join us for our Saturday sales. We go live here on YouTube every single week and we actually show you the product live and you get to chat, you get to make friends, you get to ask questions, you get to see the product in real lifetime. And of course, we have games and giveaways and all kinds of fun. Also, of course, we hope that you guys follow us on Instagram. If you are on Instagram, make sure that you click on over there and follow us on Instagram for more inspiration and that you also join our Facebook group, which is full of amazing, talented artists who are always sharing their talents. And of course, it's a great place for you to also post the things that you make and ask questions and get to know even more crafty friends. And of course, to join in challenges and always be in the know because that is mostly where we share a lot of our information so we definitely hope to see you there now if you are interested in receiving more exclusive content uh, more videos and private classes we hope that you also check out our sax academy or spectrum art creations academy it is a great way to be able to get exclusive content such as classes and workshops and lives and of course make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell to be notified because we have live sales tutorials product demos online classes craft alongs product alerts and of course giveaways and challenges which is why you are here so thank you so much for joining us today in the art studio and we can't wait to get some feedback do leave us a comment let us know if you're participating and we hope to see you soon don't forget to check out these other videos for more inspiration bye